So today we're doing something real exciting. We're building a new cycle car frame and we're using a new plan. That's it on the floor. We've already built it in this part, but we're gonna show you how we do it. Coming up next. Okay guys, so this is pretty exciting. Um, Steven, my son, has been working on learning Fusion 360. And so we've taken the basic cycle cart plan. This is what Dennis Thomas provided since 2015. This is his shop plan for old number 27. Um, you can see it's a pretty rudimentary frame. Very few cross members in it. Uh, this is more of a Stevenson formula because it is made with a wooden box. Uh, the cycle cart's evolved a little bit since then. We've added some more cross members and using different building materials instead of a plywood box. You can build it with aluminum or fiberglass or pretty much any method you want or you can still use the wooden box which I, I think is really a good idea which we're probably going to do in another video because we're going to design something cool to make it easy to build so what we've done is we come up with a full scale set of prints okay so this is a one-to-one -one drawing it's a three foot by eight foot piece of paper and the cycle cart plans are right on here so uh, I got with Mark Parnell Mark was building cycle cart plans basically with my frame design and Dennis Thomas's frame design kind of a a, a mashup of both of our frames uh, to kind of design what we think is a really good cycle car frame. So he's also designed a whole bunch of parts. He's designed steering rods and steering uh, adapters to make this fit the frame. He's made motor plates. This is a Azusa motor plate and his motor plate. I'll show you the difference primarily of this right here, made in the USA. And the Azusa plate is a little weird size. It's not symmetrical. It's got a certain right and a left, but this is symmetrical right and left. You can turn it upside down, it doesn't matter. Uh, he's also got differential spacers. This is designed to di mount a differential in your cycle cart if you choose to. We designed this frame to accept this. If you want to bolt it in, he's got bolting parts here. So you can bolt it in or weld it in, however you want to do it. And then he's also got this bracket to mount the uh, cheap go-kart uh, caliper on your cycle cart. Uh, we've got Azusa bearings. And Mark also makes some Azusa bearing carriers for the uh, flanget bearings. So we've got all of our tools ready to go. And so the next thing is to start cutting the cross members. So uh, we're gonna roll this out on the floor and cut this plan up, get started. Okay, so we got the cross members all cut and cleaned up and uh, we're ready to go ahead and handle our main frame rail. So the first step in doing that is deciding on your design. The basic design, we put a little bit of a wedge in the front of this to give it a little more interest. Uh, the square frame just looks a little boring and a lot of cars had a kind of a tar tapered frame or a rounded frame. Some have an arc in them, in both directions. But for our purposes, we're doing a basic cycle cart design. So this is where you can take your frame and change it if you want to have a little roundedness in there little curve. The Aston Martin has that and so does my Duesenberg. But my Model T has this exact same frame design. So it goes about 12 inches back and we're going to put, cut off one inch and weld in a piece of steel in there to cover up the top. So uh, that's next. Okay, so I've got the first side marked. To keep in mind, there's a bottom and a top on a cycle car, or a lot of these frames. There's a welded frame here at the factory, so we're gonna put that at the bottom. So this is the top. We're gonna roll it back over, and I'm gonna flip this over, and line it all back up again, and then mark this side. Okay, so I got some 16th inch flat stock, one inch wide, 
steel that we're going to use to fill on the top. And this is also going to work, we're going to make brackets out of this later for your suspension pieces, but this is going to go here. So I've got to clearance this down a little bit, so it's a little bit proud. So I've got to grind off a little material here and here, get that to lay down flat. And then once that's done, we'll weld this in place. And when we do weld it, we'll have to brace it a little bit because it's a little bit, this metal kind of has tension in it and it kind of sucked it together. So you'll need to find something to make it wider if you see right here. Just a tad bit, this is a tad bit wider than, this, than the steel is right now because it's narrowed a little bit when it went together, kind of whoop, like that, so. So I've got the uh, first frame rail cut with the wedge and I've laid it on top of our second frame rail. We're gonna use that as a template so that they're both symmetrical and exactly the same. And once I make the cut, we'll grind them smooth with the flapper disc to make sure they're identical. So they're both uh, are symmetrical once we're done welding it. So we'll go ahead and get this marked. Okay, so we got the wedge cut down at the front of the, of the uh, one by three stud or steel frame. And I've got this lined up at the front, the template at the wedge here. And we do this first, just in case you mess this up, you saw a good long length of material. This is a 10 foot piece. So I start with a 10 foot piece, we line that up. And then we're gonna line it up at the back. We got this squared up in the back and I've got a, a pilot hole already planned out here. So. Now let me know where the pilot hole is going to go. I'm going to move my magnet just a little closer. And we're going to drill this pilot hole out. So this is for your axle bearings. So we're going to do that on both frames. And then we're going to use the drill press to drill all the way through so that both sides are lined up perfectly. So the next thing to do is to cut this frame rail to length. So I'm going to go ahead and cut off this little piece of paper and use that as a guide. And uh, we've already got our hole drilled. And uh, what I did was I actually drilled the hole through both of these frame members so they're perfectly straight. So cut this off now and then we'll get this ready to go. Okay, so we got these cut to size and made sure they're exactly the same. Fits the template perfectly. Little hole lines up exactly right for our axle. And we've got a couple feet of cutoffs there. You could use those for your cross members if you wanted to. I chose just to get an extra piece of steel. So I've got three 10 foot studs I started with. So we've got extras for bracing or whatever, or your second second cut frame. Okay, time to drill holes with a hole saw. Okay, so we've got a uh, metal cutting hole saw, two and three eighths chucked up in the machine. And on the inside hole, uh, this is where the outside for the bearing mount. The inside hole, we're gonna drill a one and a half inch hole on the inside where the axle goes to give it clearance. So. Uh, Let's do that now. Okay, so we got the outer bearing holes two and three eighths cut, the inner holes one and a half, and that's for the axle to clear, clearance, because you're a one inch axle. So next we're gonna do a little bit of welding. Now this is where, if you're gonna take this to a welding shop, you're gonna wanna tell them they're gonna need to separate this, because this tries to close in. So I made a adapter, so this is seven eighths inch wide, it's a piece of three quarter inch steel with a, another piece of steel glued, or welded to it, so I have to slide this in here and kind of hammer it in. But it will split and separate these things to the right width. So I'm gonna take a hammer and get this in here. All right, so we're gonna stay down far enough that we're not gonna weld it in there. We can still pull it out. So when I was mocking this up earlier, this fits just about perfect. And so we'll start the welding here and then clamp it down because there's a little bit of a bend in it. So we wanna, after we get the first weld across here, we'll, we'll tack this down and put a clamp on it and hold this down and then weld it. We'll do a nice easy weld along this edge right there. Okay, so we're gonna start here to lock it in place and then stitch down the side. So I'm gonna get this other one out of the way real quick. So one little note, I did put a bit of a bevel on the steel right here. We're gonna grind this weld flush. So that way there's material in there and it won't just be you know, grinding all the weld away. So here we go. Okay, 
Okay, so we got these uh, rails welded up, and um, now what we're gonna do is take the flapper disc and knock down the welds. Trying to keep the welds small. I was working on my technique as I went along, and uh, was operating and changing the heat settings to where I got less buildup and more penetration. There's pretty good penetration. I already rubbed off most of the penetration, but you can see here, this arc, the heat penetration is bigger than here, so this had a higher heat setting. So this is also a good chance to, to dial in your machine, so when you do weld your frame up, you'll be on the right track with your settings. So uh, next step, clean these up, and we'll start laying out our frame. Okay, so before we get to welding the frame, I went ahead and drilled out our holes for our bearing flangettes. And I got it installed here just kind of temporarily. You see there's just a 5 16 holes. These are three inches apart. You want to find the center. And then you want to take your flangette, find the best place for it there, center it in the frame, and drill your holes. And what I did, I used the drill press to do that so that they were straight. Uh, I've had experience in the past with a handheld drill. These going in at slight angles. Um, better that they go in straight is a little easier to secure this because when these tighten down, that's what secures your axle in place. One other thing we're going to do, because this is a 063 thickness or 1 8 inch thick frame, a little thinner than what Mark is using, which is I think a 0 0.093 frame. Um, I've got these little half inch by half inch pieces of tubing that I cut in 7 8 inch thick thickness. I'm going to put those in here and to support the bolt that's going to go through here. So that when the bolt goes in, like that, well, I can get in there. Um, so this is going to get welded in place. Kind of center it in there. Um, we want to make sure it doesn't interfere with the flangette. So this is going to get tack welded there. Uh, what this does, it prevents this from crushing because when you go tighten your bolts down, uh, your frame will want to de deform there. So this just supports that. So there's other ways. You can use round tube or square tube or whatever. Some guys use pieces of wood to shove in the frame to strengthen that section which is fine as well. But uh, I'm gonna go and tack those in. And this frame will just about be ready. Oh, I forgot to show you on the other end, I went ahead and ground off the high welds, smooth them down. So the smaller you make your welds, the easier this process is. So these are nice and smooth now. And uh, getting closer and closer to being ready to put it on the big template and weld in the cross members. So making great progress. I didn't videotape the welding, but there's a little support piece in there. In both, both, both of the frame rails. Only weld it on one side, it's really all you need, just to hold it in place so it doesn't rattle around. Because uh, once you put your bearings in, it's just going to uh, put pressure here to keep that from rattling around and support the frame. So, uh, making great progress. Okay guys, so we got the uh, overall frame template on the workbench. And we're getting ready to lay our metal on top of this frame. So each, each of these lines, of course, this is your main frame rail. These are other, there's three frame rails at the back to support the motor. These two support the motor. This goes in front of the motor, in front of the sprocket area. Um, so my son did a great job designing this, and we are refining a few things on here as we build this. This is why we're doing this, so that when you do buy this template, um, it will be pretty user friendly. So uh, we'll add more information as we go along. But uh, time to put the frame on here and strap it down and get ready for welding. Okay, so I got the frame rails on the table all lined up inside the drawing uh, you can see there's a tiny bit of a black line visible on the outside of the frame rail and it's consistent all the way around you can see a tiny bit of white here uh, depending on how you lay it out uh, as long as you're consistent and square it should be fine i started at the back uh, to get this perfectly square back here and they're even on both sides um, i did have to trim these down just a little bit to get them to fit perfectly uh, which is part of the process. So I, I cut them a little long intending to cut them down because it's easier to take away material than it is to add material and make it too small. So uh, we're ready to get this clamped in and uh, start welding on this thing. Okay, so I got my Eastwood MIG-175 ready to go. Um, I got a bucket of water here with a rag because I don't want this paper to burn up too much. I know we're going to cut the little fires. I got my fire extinguisher, my gloves. Got the, the frame clamped to the table. So I'm just going to go around slowly, weld a couple pieces at a time, try not to put too much heat into it and warp the frame. Uh, that's one thing that will happen if you put too much heat in the frame at one time, it'll get twisted and warped. And uh, we're trying to avoid that. So uh, patience is a virtue. And I've always struggled in the past with going too fast and making my stuff warp. So I'm going to try not to do that on this one. So uh, let's see how she goes.
Okay, so it took me about two hours to weld this whole frame up. Uh, of course, has all the steel was already ready to go. Um, in welding this, I was a little afraid the paper would catch fire. I mean, it definitely got a couple of scorch marks on it, but it didn't do too bad. I didn't weld all the way down to the paper, obviously. I welded about halfway down, took the paper away, then I flipped it over and did the rest of the welding. I found it's easier to stand it up and weld it. You get a much better weld when it's when vertical. That's probably true for anybody that's welding, or maybe not. I'm a novice welder, I'm not a welder, I'm a grinder. You saw me grinding some stuff. Uh, what I was doing was I was clearing seeing some areas where I blew holes in this stuff because this is thin metal and the heat was a little too high. I do have a few good welds, um, but the inside where the body's gonna go, I definitely wanna clearance that so you're, if you have a big thick old giant weld like that was on here, see how wide this weld was? This big nasty weld I ground it down. Uh, like I said, I blew some holes in it. And what happens is um, the welds get thick then your body panels and stuff have a harder time fitting around those welds so you have to clearance more so you want the welds to be thinner in here if you can you can be thicker out here because nobody's going to see these outer welds inside the engine compartment uh, back here where the axle is going to go i mean clean them up as best you can if you're a perfect welder and you're an experienced welder then you're going to laugh at my welds obviously but uh, like i said i'm a novice welder so these welds are plenty strong i've never had a weld on my frames crack or break I'm probably putting way too much material in the corners, but it's strong and it's it's sturdy. Um, now the the whole thing did kind of you can see where the line is slightly different on one side or the other. So the frame sort of slid did this. I even although I had clamped down, that's to be expected when you heat up metal. It's going to move around a little bit. It did not warp though. It's not it's sitting on the table flat, so there's no warpage, which is good. It's not wobbling, which is great. Um, it's a little bit of a little bit of parallel movement is fine. All the pieces are parallel to each other. It won't create a problem. This is a cycle car. We're not building a Formula One car here. So the welding of the frame is done. Next up, we'll be closing up these crazy parts in the front of the chassis and then putting on our brackets to mount these springs and then the motor plate. Okay, so now I've been making these spacers and the covers for the frame rail. So the open frame rail with the back, you can get a plastic cover at your metal supply shop or you can just welded a piece of one inch flat stock, which I have here. Uh, same stuff we're using to make the brackets with. This is one inch by three and a quarter. And I'm making it three and a quarter so I can, it'll be a little long and it'll be easier to weld. It's a little oversized, it's easier to weld. Um, so three and a quarter for the rear. The fronts are two and a quarter. Um, these are the spring mounts for the Renegade Cycle Cart Springs. It's gonna take a 5 16 bolt hole. These are about three and a quarter overall. This bolt hole center is about three eighths of an inch from the bottom. And we need to space these out a little bit. So we're gonna, this is gonna get welded to the chassis and then this is gonna go on top of it. And we're doing that because your Renegade springs and most of these springs are one and a quarter inches wide. So we need to space this a quarter inch. So two pieces of one inch to eight, one eighth inch thick equal a quarter inch. So that's gonna get us the spacing we need. And um, these have holes in them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug weld these. And once I put this on top, I'll weld it to the frame on both sides in the top. So this is just there. Um, this plug weld is there just to kind of hold it in place while I weld the rest of it in place. And that's what I've done on my other frames. Mark actually makes a part where he takes this and machines that out of a solid piece of steel. He'll machine off this bit. Um, that's a lot of work. A whole lot easier just to cut a bunch of little flat pieces. Um, and these are different size holes because these actually are were already cut. These were like some parts I've left over that already have a hole in them. So those holes are a little bigger than they need to be. Um, this is just a 5 16th hole, just like the rest. So those are gonna get mounted. I'll show you over here on the frame. This is gonna get welded on here. And this is gonna get welded on here. And of course the cover piece is gonna go in the front right here. Sorry, I'm trying to do this and hold the camera. So that's about what that's gonna look like. So we'll get that um, welded up. We'll get ready also to put the motor plate on. But I'm gonna go and do this front first and finish off the welding part of the frame. Okay, so I welded the ends onto the frame. And thinking about this, you could probably actually do this before you assemble the frame. Here's the rear ones. I'll show you those here. I've already cleaned them up a little bit. Uh, this weld's a little ugly. Uh, thinking about it now, this probably would have been a lot better welding ahead of time because you can get a result like this on that end. Um, anyway, lesson learned. So maybe put these tail pieces on, uh, frame ends on, prior to welding up the frame. That might be a, a good idea and uh, making good progress here. So the next step will be to mount or to weld on these little deals, uh, these little spacers, excuse me. And we're gonna weld 
these bits on top. And so that'll be next. So uh, yeah, making progress. Okay, so the frame is upside down right now and I've got the Renegade spring here. I'm using that as a guide to mount this so that these holes line up. And I've got a little spacer under here that's sitting underneath the spring, between the spring and the frame to give a little space between the shackle and the frame itself. So I will clamp this down here and make sure these are straight. Use a magnet, we'll get those tacked in. Okay, so to get the motor plate in place, and I recommend uh, you do this for yourself, because I'm gonna tell you where this is gonna go as far as this build goes. But depending on if you use a differential or not, I'm setting this up as if someday this would be upgraded to a differential. So I'm spacing this sprocket accordingly. So the center line, uh, I'm going over three inches. So typically the sprocket spacers for uh, the Renegade makes is an inch and a half. And then with the center pumpkin on the differential, that puts it three inches from center. And that centers the motor really well in the, in the chassis. Um, and then this will be an inch and a half from center for the disc brake. So what we're doing is we're setting this up. I'm gonna bolt this down next. I'm gonna get it lined up perfectly. And I'm gonna use this little set, set screw uh, when you do your final installation, make sure you use blue Loctite on these set screws on the, also on the um, bearings. And I did, I forgot to mention, I did center the bearing or the axle in this chassis. So this is perfectly centered right to left. So it's exactly in the center. Um, just got some temporary bolts. I don't have the right length bolts. These are a little too long. But um, next thing to do is get this, this installed and centered on the line. Then we'll figure out the motor plate we'll put, put, by putting the motor in it and then the chassis will just about be ready. Okay, so I've got my torque converter installed on my motor, and I'm lining the sprocket on the torque converter up with the sprocket on the axle, so that you can tell that they're parallel. This is how you line your chain up as well. And that's how I'm setting up my, my motor plate. I've got bolts through here, just, just sitting here loose right now. And uh, we're gonna make sure this is square in the chassis, but that's where it needs to go. So we'll put a few tacks on this deal here, and uh, we're on the money. We're at the point where we're ready to put brake uh, mounts on here, but I realize there's so many different options that you're gonna have to probably work up your own. Uh, this little plate right here is for this Yerf Dog dual piston caliper. I really like this because it's about 30 bucks on Amazon. And this is designed to mount underneath the frame down here. And um, you just have to put an L metal on here, either bolt it or weld it, and then bolt it here. The reason you wanna bolt it on, and I found this out on mine because I welded mine on, it's really hard to take this apart if this isn't removable. In fact, the original Yerp Dog, this is the original Yerp Dog bracket, is removable. It comes off the chassis, and then you can take it apart off of here. But anyway, so what you do is you put in a piece of L metal, bolt it to your chassis in the right spot, and uh, that'll work great. I'm putting it underneath here because that's how it bleeds the best. So Mark has a couple different options. So this is one. This is an expensive option. He has a racing brake option that actually mounts your caliper to these same bolts right here. So to mount right here, your, your, your calipers would be right here. So this, this disc would be over here. So that would not probably work with the differential. This would work with the differential. Also, you could use mechanical brakes from my Earhart. Those are really simple to set up, just a mechanical rod. So there's different options, many different ways to do this. My son cart has uh, racing brakes off a uh, sport bike motorcycle. So they work really well as well. So I think we're gonna call that the end of this video. I think this illustrates how this is done. This was two Saturdays worth of work, okay? Um, of course, I've done this before, but if you take this to a professional welder, or if you're a better welder than I am, you won't have near as much grinding to do. I spent a lot of time today grinding, making these welds, cleaning them up a little bit. Uh, I have a few welds that turned out really well. Of course, they're probably the last ones I do of the day. So this frame is ready to go, ready for a body. Um, this frame plan, we're gonna make a few corrections and a few in, uh, informational add some information on it. But this will be for sale on our Etsy site initially, and at some point maybe a website, but we'll see how it goes. But for right now, we'll just put it on our Etsy page. You guys can order these up, and uh, we'll ship it right to you, and you can build your own cycle cart right in your garage. So thanks for watching, guys. Get out in the garage and build something cool.